have uh, Simone, and he's going to talk about creating art, art, graphic yeah, screens, art for, pixel uh, art, for an uh, RPG, for his RPG uh, 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 game here uh, yeah. uh, on the Amiga. So go ahead, In Simone. Sixteen minutes from now, then Amiga. If uh, yeah. Okay, go ahead, Simone. Okay. So I. First of all, let me get along with the <laughs> get off the stage fried in a second, and then I will be fried. So I usually last time that you see me, I was here in the in the rest of musician, and I was talking about I did use my tricks to do like uh, video game music for uh, mega ports and games. This time I will be in another uh, with another pair of uh, with another uh, coat I will say and I will go with the pixel artist coat that actually was the beginning of what I was interested in computing on the first place so as a musician I I used to call myself JMD and uh, probably I think somebody of you that is in retro gaming in Amiga might stumble on some of the music that I made on the games. And I also had a, back, had a side career that was the one pixel artist. And uh, actually started pretty early because before that I was involved in computing and my, my main thing, my main target was to do I wanted to do comics, I wanted to do animation. And that's why I went in an art school. At least in Italy, when art school is like at the level of uh, high school. And usually to get a proper art degree later, you have to go to the academy that is instead at the level of uh, college. But I didn't do that. One of the reasons is because one day I stumbled in a computer exhibition and uh, and that was the beginning of my end here. <laughs> mm. And besides that, he, he clashed with another passion that I had since a kid that I was arcade games. So, you know, computer at home, arcade games, programmable, I can do my own game. <laughs> Try at least. Before to go further, I, I want to make a little break. My first computer was a ZX Spectrum. And my brother got a big 20, by the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so I, I was working in basic of both. And uh, plus a friend of mine had a 64, so I had a full, uh, an almost full exposition to the field. And I was doing some, we tried to do some games and port it between one machine and the other. I have somewhere a D64 or a game that I tried to do in Italy somewhere. It will need to be fixed because uh, we were unable to bring, the this was a bit messed up, so I had to kind of rewrite most of the stuff. One day when I have time, I will put it somewhere in QD. It's not the best game, it's a game. Then later on, I got my, I also stumbled in an Amiga in 86, in another exhibition, and uh, that was really out of my world, and I thought this will be really a big thing. I was the first one on my town to have an Amiga 500, mm. 1.2. Then I realized that Amiga is not as easy to program as a big machine. <laughs> no. Especially because the basic provider, the Microsoft one, was not the best. Mm -hmm. And I kind of sidetracked on the pixel art and later on also music, but yeah. And I went together with some friends of mine, we did like a demo group, we were called Quaza. We did a couple of demos, we did a couple of utility discs. One was called Arsenal, that was like, uh, I recall to another Commodore 64 utility disc that was called Arsenal, that was pretty popular in mm -hmm. Europe. Awesome. So we did, uh, we were Quaza, we called it Arsenal, we put several utility there. And we also started to work in a game. And besides um, that, I was also doing animation that I don't have here because uh, they are all in Vimeo and this computer is too old to go properly in Vimeo, but yeah, let's assume. And one of the, those animations were done mostly with Deluxe Paint and uh, yeah, by hand. 
So light table actually it looks painful when I use a lot of light table to do this animation. I had like a approach that was like doing, drawing all the keyframes and then doing the inter and the inter between it with uh, using light the light table to do all the animation. And that that's the same technique that they use for the pixel art mostly. We also started to do a game that it was called powder. And uh, that it took, okay, don't look at the date, it's because we started in 90, but then there were several things in the middle, and then at the, at the end, the <laughs> game came out in 98. For a label that was called Vercosoft, it was a budget. It was well received. I don't know, Amiga Format did it like it too much, they give it a 23 person. Oh! <laughs> but Amiga Format and uh, other, uh, other magazines were a bit more thin, but they didn't sell too much, but at least it came out. <laughs> and as work in other games, one was a, man a manager, football manager game, was called Euroleague Manager, that one is a story aside that I can do. Then later on, I started again to do pixel art in uh, 2013, 2014, when I was trying to find some kind of, beside the music, some kind of way to like uh, come back in a uh, track. Because in the meanwhile, I, I went to work in a desktop publishing, animation, multimedia. I did my work like a web developer, designer, was using director, was using flash, or this kind of modern stuff, or at least they were modern at the time. And then later I had a little bit of back to the back to the origins. Moment <laughs> they started. So let's go one moment. Let's do a little bit of the history here because also is related also how I did my pixel art work. Because there are some things, most of the methodology, powder has been, I may say, the, the place where I grew up, like a pixel artist more than other things. And let's talk about, first of all, powder. Let's say it was a shoot em up, came out for Amiga ECS, OCS ECS. Was published by Microsoft. And there I was working both in the music and uh, with another artist that called Marco Maltese, we were working in the graphic. We were having like a number of level each, and I was working on some levels, and the, and the other guy was working on other levels. Plus he did the player ship, he did uh, the point uh, pan, the score panel, and uh, other things. We have some of the picture here that I say from powder, some of the graphic of, the, of some of the levels, and those screens. This one is the only one they got used in the in the game at the game over, but those others were. Uh, like supposed to be used at the beginning on each level, a bit in style of agony. They are in a half bright EHB, so 64 color of 32 plus 32. Hmm. And uh, the graphic of the game is using, uh, it's not using dual play, it's a 16 color game, plus some uh, sprites in parallax and for the bullets. I have other things from the game, some unused picture, like in example, this one was supposed to be a billboard. For all the people that was in manga, this was Leda 2. There is no Leda 2, this was just our imagination. This was one of the enemies that does recycle on the Ruiz level, it was for another level, it's a big ants. And the other, this was from unused space level. A news boss for uh, the factory level, and this was a news a kind of montrash more self portrait of the coders. Mm. They didn't want it at the end, so yes, they got ashamed of it. All these graphics are made with uh, are all 16 colors, and uh, I want to point about this one. We were using a system of which we were turning on and off big planes and masks so that we can have like groups of eight color sprites or four color sprites. So to have more objects on the screen. In fact, one of the things that they say about powder got a lot of stuff on the screen. Those down here, they were supposed to be some uh, enemies passing by. Those in example are just four colors. This is what it is. And uh, this one down there is eight. So yeah, that was a pretty last 
This one, in example, those P's are all four colors beside the uh, added is eight. So all me, and this was all four colors in example. So there was a lot of a lot of mix uh, techniques <coughs> to to use more objects on the screen to use less raster time. Mm. The game was running at 25 frames per second. Yes. Um. Uh, maybe I missed it. What programs or program are you using to create your screens, your graphic screens here? Okay, my moon all in, in this game there was powder that was paint for. The most of the graphics that they do is deluxe paint. And other assets, in example, those were explosion, all these, like in example, the frames, these were pre when you see with this, with the frame, they were prepared for the coder to be graph for them. And uh, transform from the IFF in the, in the Robit mat format for the game to be used, the assets. Like this, this, this. Did those, uh, those down here, they were map blocks for the, for the game. This was from the new space level, ruins level, and then the factory level. And those which there were foreground uh, like uh, parallax element, those were made with sprites. So we have two, four sprites, so 232 each and uh, with the same color palette. This, a different color palette, this. Same for the factory level, ruins level. This was a hand level boss for ruins that at the end when this destroy become this one, this kind of robot. And that was a, uh, an early study for the logo. It is a bit different from the one used. I was trying to use like a lunar landscape. Yeah. Then another game that I work was Euro League Manager. In this one, I was working together. The coder was Mancuso. Sean Mancuso was an Italian living in UK. And I was together with uh, a person that was the organizer of the Pixel Art Expo, there was a, like, a, like an art competition there for Amiga and other computer in Italy. One of the two, there was Big Movie and Pixel Art Expo. So he got me in touch, he said, I need somebody to help Sean with uh, 2D graphics, I would do 3D because he was a specialist in 3D. And uh, he was looking for a way to do animation. This was a football manager, so you don't have a really, you don't pay exactly with the player on the finger. Rather, you will have the, you will have like uh, some summary animation that do the goal when uh, the teams do goals. And also need somebody to do all the background for all the several screens. So he provide me some. Uh, Picture from soccer. I was, a, and that was a mixed work. I was working between. Uh, I use a scanner in my workplace to scan all the picture. Then I did work on it on photo, on photogenics, and I did some image processing processes, especially those two at the top. Then I use the art department pro to reduce the colors and prepare it and make a super palette. And instead for the animation. At the beginning, we were thinking to use uh, like uh, all uh, to use uh, sprites, actually box in this case, to to simulate all the action and then more elasticity. But then uh, they ran out on time constraints, so they asked me to do some fixed animation with the paint and to save uh, to save save space. We made it kind of small, they were, they were running on this display, and there were like two, three fixed animations. Like for a miss, for when he scores, for when the other team scores, and things like that. And for the time I did all the animation of the players, because I was supposed to have, a, in fact, all the players like right to interacting on the field. But then I really had to use all the sprites to create some kind of fixed animation to do all the things. So we have a regular player, we have the gatekeeper, and the referrer down here. Using the same sprite mostly, besides some little different, like in example, sunglasses, things on the shirts. And I, I think this is 16 core, but I now I don't remember for all the assets here. 
more recent projects, this was this one, Holy Warrior. Hmm. There was a, an Italian guy, Dario Bongi, that was taking out, in, he started in the 90s a uh, kind of JRPG game, and uh, he was trying to finish his project, so I asked him to help him to cooperate, and I offered myself to help with the music and with the graphics, and it was a way for me to kind of go back in the, in the field and start to do some graphics. And here, the, we are, here we have a fixed palette for all the game, 32 colors, 16 for the player and the other enemies, because he's using sprites, and 16 for the backgrounds. And, so, and I also made some like background, fixed backgrounds for all the fights, and uh, those here are the fixed background for the fights in example. It was a forest, it's a mountain, I kind of finish but yeah. Because then he become father, so the project got on all, but then we have pieces for the map, elements that should scroll. Those are all pieces that are using the, that we will use on the map environment. We have the player sprite here. This 32 by 32, but when we go in the big map, there is another small version, 16 by 16. And then this one is for some uh, some seas. You will have the player go through this uh, sprays. Like in example, this is the gateway of the of a witch castle, and those are all made with the little paint. I think those two people, those three, they may have seen it because I sent it to Doug for the Amiga <laughs> art competition in 2019, I think. Mm. So, but those are all the lots paint, and uh, they are they are made by hand, but they are based from picture. Was seen the picture and tried to recreate it on the paint. Then those are other walls that are being made, like in example, those are all tile set for a game that was supposed to come up with Simul Mondo. Yeah, the same company that made the Dylan Dog games and was famous in Italy to do those games that were sell on the, on the newsstand about some of the Italian characters like Dylan Dog, Tex, Diabolic. At the time they were uh, looking for people to cooperate with, but they were often a kind of like uh, try before to hire approach and they were uh, like looking for gigs so they asked me to do this uh, those tile sets for a supposed game that was uh, probably set in japan and uh, i did all this environment for like a sober environment those are 16 colors then here we have another set this was for I suppose Arsenal 3, there are two came out, the three never came out, but I was working on the graphics, on the logo. This was for a supposed intro that never happened, so I was uh, testing the testing the, the graphics set. Those were for demo. That I, one was for an idea that there's an Italian software house, now, now still around, it's called Miles. But at the time it was publishing for Amiga and I was trying to get some gig from them. I was trying hard to work in the video game environment. Not much success though. And uh, other projects again, some, some test screens that maybe were, they were done like, try to compete some other contests but then they didn't have the time. Some tests for like uh, graphics of games. This one are eight color sprite for a game that I was planning. Try to convince the people of Powder to do after, but then they say, oh, we spent eight years on this game, we don't want to touch it all. <laughs> mm. So yeah. So now, let's go. We end up in 2020, that is when I started to work on the graphic of Ice World. So Ice World is a role-playing game, turn-based, and he was caught by Roy Riggs on Commodore 64. <coughs> it's an RPG with a bit of old themes. In fact, the, thing, the, the main character is a, is a mercenary. 
and also one of those people that cannot keep his pants in place. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is kind of convert to the thing, to the plot, and so he has some the uh, 64 version in some places have some not safe for worse screens. And even in the plot, you will see a lot of this kind of, I would say, not, not almost like Lord of the Rings, but something completely different. Huh. <laughs> and so this is a turn-based RPG, he has fantasy teams, he has, he does a turn-based fight. It's pretty big because of six, seven environments. And they were, Looking for somebody to work with uh, with the 16-bit part. The coder was working uh, on GFA basic. Actually, lately is going to a mix approach GFA assembly, and I think see the coder is Nicolas Caron. He had some uh, health problem in the past, so that's what one that is one of the things that is holding a bit the project. And uh, the Amiga version is in consideration also because the assets are made under the Amiga environment. And uh, so I think if so people might go to double sided games, that is a publisher, and say, oh, we're interested in an Amiga version. So probably they will consider more. So people push, uh, push for it. And uh, the, this asset that I'm going to show, I'm trying to, those are mostly made for the demo that should come out soon, I hope when the code will feel better and feel finish all the things. And so I try to keep it a bit spoiler free. The things that you will see most here are, are from the demo. And then it will be more asset for the final version. The No Safe Forward screen were made by Christoph Romagnoli, that is another graphic artist. It might be People know it as Tenshu. He worked in a lot of games on Amiga lately, Barbarian Plus, and uh, I forgot the name of the RPG. Oh, the, no, the, the, the Black Dawn, and the Super Metal Hero, and also in the new, I forgot that is the Cyber Race game. I forgot the name. They're all for double side. He also worked for Ubisoft, so he's doing this on the. Oh yeah, and also David Temple together with uh, Graeme Cole, that you know as uh, Mac Keaton. So he's, he's working a lot with Amiga lately. And I, and this started because I worked with the with the coder of uh, Barbarian Plus and Black Dawn, that is Colin Bella. I worked with them in Barbarian Plus, I was working on the soundtrack of the game. Barbarian Plus is a remake of the original Barbarian game. The little downside is that it's made using Amos, so it's a bit slow at least on the lower machine, but it's a, it's a good thing. Still a good game. When you go fast. And uh, so because of this info, and they also asked me to do the soundtrack for Super Metal Hero, that is a game that is like the kind of Power Rangers style. But... And so I was involved with the soundtrack, then they asked, do you do also pixel art? We're looking for a pixel artist to help with the Ivesworth port. And uh, so I say, yeah, I, I, I'm interested if you because they were looking just to do the demo and then things grow, but then I started to do the asset, they like my style and they begin to put the work on it. So we have the 8-bit game here on the left that was made by Roy. And uh, we had the idea that to do the graphics for the 16-bit game that you can see some of the screenshots there on the right. Another problem was to bring the 8-bit atmosphere to the 16-bit or try to improve it. How we start? We start, first of all, we start with the color palette. For uh, some constant, we had to use only 16 colors. And the more in the game, asset are done in the looks paint 4. Besides some things that like, is using uh, external tool, like in this case Photoshop, I'm using my own uh, cheap graphic tablet and uh, drawings. And that will be, I will explain better. 
And right now, because of the fact that I don't have a real Amiga, I have to use Guinea Way. The machine that I use most is this. I had another Toshiba bigger, but that dead, and now the new one. So I use Guinea Way and the from there, and they do a the sets there. And uh, the palette has to be versatile because we are trying to use one only palette for all the games. So the colors has to be very kind of exhaustive, like the color palette of the 64, and try to cover most of the most of the cases that we can make, and at the same time try not to look boring. That's unfamiliar to everybody that works in 8 bit, I guess. I have only 15 color because the 16 is transparent, so I cannot use it. <coughs> so, user interface. We have to use it to kind of refer to the six, to the Commodore 64 interface. So, same, most more or less same organization of the display of the text and all the stats. And uh, Nicholas made it some base version of the interface that you can see on the back and asked me to give it a little bit of uh, touch. So that's what I came out with, with all the folds and kind of metal shinings. And that is the base interface of the game. So we have also about the user interface. We have the, the fight system that is very similar to the one of the 64, is organized in the same way. You will have the enemy on one side, and the player on the other side and the action that is available to them and all the action that you can use from the joystick. And in the top you have your stats there, the energy, the stamina. And uh, this is the version that was used for the 16-bit, all the elements. We, we are using, using the same player, the same uh, player sprite that is on the game. So <laughs> same for you and the enemy. There might be an exception later because of size, but usually that's what I'm doing. And uh, talking about the, all the map elements, we are trying to do a little bit better job on the 64 on the description of on the elements and try to use the 16 uh, colors that we have. So I try to use the most of the palette through some detailing, just a position and uh, also try to use a bit more ties than possible. This is our usually build all the pieces of the of the map elements in the deluxe paint. It looks kinda of confusing because it's going by pieces, but then this is the part where I kind of build the pieces, like in example the chair. Then I have all the several kind of floors that we can have, two, three, four kind of floor tiles. And I may have like the carrots of the chair that is going to the brown floor tiles, kind of the chair that may go to the gray floor tiles, kind of the chair that are next to the table. So I build all these elements here. This one is like a straw bed that you can use like to replenish your energy. And uh, when we have like elements that I have to do like patterns or go around, that's, that's what I do. I usually try to build everything. When you see those yellow and uh, magenta lines, it's like because try to keep the sides. Each tile is 16 by 16, and those are my like sides reference to, the, to, to make sure that the, the things stay inside the tile constraints. Same for the element, like in example, this part before to be put inside of the... It's being made to the 15, 16, but then I put in the middle of this that is 32, so it's in the middle of the like the tables. As you can see, I build first the table, which is the kit, and then I try to integrate it with uh, like several floors and other shadows. And then when I test it, I, te I, uh, I test, I export the final tile floor that is very similar to the one that you see like four powder with all the map elements there. And I use uh, some tools that it's like, a, this is an application tool that I use on Amiga, it's called Power Crawler. It's a bit old, I got it from Aminet. 
Some people might decide to use tile or windows or other tools. The tool is not important, just that you that I you put all the pieces together in order to check that they will fit and they will create like a believable world. I did a video here. Yeah. That I can show that I use the tool like to to go around and see if things fit. Mm. This is like in the pirate ship, probably made it too big, but at least. It is in all the types of being like a test of the pirate ship. This, this will not just be the same map that is in the game because they're using different tools, but at least I use it to test the, the ship and make sure that everything fits in its place. I think it's going to be too big. And actually, when you go downstairs, you go in another, you jump in another side of the map where you see I'm downstairs in the, inside the gallery. There. character I started with a base shape on the player here. The player at the beginning is naked because he don't have anything. He woke up like naked like uh, having a, an hangover because the day before he was kind of, that is part of the plot. He was together with a beautiful elf girl that is disappeared. Now it's just him, naked, <laughs> broke and with a white cat around. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, this is, but in the, in, it also because the player in the game is going to wear and show what he has, like in example, sword, uh, dagger, shield, arm, or anything, will be overlaid to the player. But, and this is also being the base character that we're using to create all the other characters later on, modifying the base player sprite. There are four movements for each direction to simulate the work. And those movements later will be modified for each one of the other players, like in example for the ladies, for, for people, for undead. Uh, then beside the enemies, the enemies of course they have their own thing, their own uh, characters, the, like the chickens or the mice. Yeah, the mice, the chickens are all on paper enemies on the thing. You can kill it, you can get some XP and... And we are using a base of four frames for each one of the direction of the characters. Then when we have the four frames, we are going to put it on this sheet. That, that's where, with all the direction in front, uh, left, right, and top. And this is the reference where the coder later will uh, clip the assets to be used on the game. 16 by 16 or 16 by 8, because some, uh, some enemies were just a bit taller, 8 pixels, some enemies 16, some enemies 10, some enemies mixed like this one, this kind of uh, ink 12. So we have several uh, and we put it there ready to be clean for the player. And we were talking about the overlaying of the elements. There might be our player or even the other player, like in example the guards or uh, some other uh, like fighter, bandits and things. And uh, we are all, all overlaying all the elements. This is based on the silhouette of the base player and then using the light table in another frame I, I'm, I'm uh, overlaying or designing all the pieces in the several uh, world position and then will be overlaid to the player like in example when he has an armor or like a cloth it will be overlaid to the naked player so it will look like he's dressed up that is holding also a sword holding a shield having a cape yeah 
then we are now starting to get to the juicy part because when you talking with other characters when you interact with them you will see like a you will have like a overlay or super in sure there will be a window where you <laughs> wear your uh, portrait and the uh, and the character portrait they might also change according to some of the things some of the state of the game that you are so the the portraits that was something that I was worried about because they are they were a bit time consuming in fact I tried first an approach to draw drawing the character directly on the the looks paint and it took like in example three hours for a single character mm. portrait to be drawn in 64 by 64. Let me see, I should have the mm. video here. Yeah. yeah, this one. This is a, I made like a steel frame of it. I make a lot. Mm. And you can see I, this was capturing one frame every 10 seconds from the last paint while I was drawing. Really, well, like three, four hours to draw this, the face, and then on the air and all the things with the same game palette. So this was three hours and it was a bit too long, and I was not too sure about the results that came out. So. <coughs> I, I wanted to see if there was a way that I can like uh, do some uh, that I can start from doodles or from a paper, scan it in the, in the computer, then color it there, and uh, and then do retouch at the end from the lots paint or uh, things like that. I did some tests and I came up with a good uh, yeah I don't know why if I keep this thing. with a good. Uh, plan, I could uh, proceed that, we, that, that, that when I was at the best of the working, was, I was able to make like two, three characters per day, that is not bad. Right now, the fact that I was using Photoshop and, uh, and other tools is because I, I'm, I'm working on them. If, probably if it was 20 years ago, I would have an Amiga plug to a scanner a problem using some uh, program like Photogenics or similar to do the same. But now I have this thing at my and uh, at my disposal I use tools. So we are starting from the draw from the drawing. This is one of the characters. I put like four or five in each uh, sheet of paper. They are drawn first with the pencil, then I go there with the uh, with a fair tip and they do all the thing and they do all the particulars. Then uh, then the, I scanned the I'm losing my English language. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using the scanner to acquire the pictures. I clean it up a bit using the level as a brightness from Photoshop in grayscale until I don't reach a good uh, like uh, black and white outline that I can use as a base. Once I reach the base I will add two layers. First a background layer. Oh first of all in, in advance I create a palette that is the similar same palette of the game. So I have the 16 color palette that I can use. Then I will create two layers. One layer for the background with the background color and another layer in the foreground when I will do all the paint. And the draw will be in the middle with a multiply and locked so I cannot draw it. And I will start to draw with a brush, with a tablet, using zero, uh, zero smearing, I mean a uh, plain, like I was in Deluxe Paint, so a plain brush, in order not to have any problem when I will reduce the color later on. And what it come out will be something like this. I will color with the base color. First I do a base color in. Then I will add another layer where I start with particulars. I don't add the ray. I didn't add with the same lady the, 
the thing the the more refined layer so I use another chart uh, and it will come something like this once I add the uh, pencil drawing and this will be the base that I use to then reduce at 64 by 64 mm -hmm. with no dithering so nearest color in order to have the best picture possible and reducing 16 colors using the same palette when we are at this point, and this is the page, I will export this in the, as a GIF and we'll break it on the Amiga side. First of all, I will use P-Paint to convert it back on IFR. And then I will open it in Deluxe Paint and we'll we do all the retouch here. And this is, this is being retouched. And uh, added all like, uh, all the, more particulars that usually are in the base color in order because many will get lost. The picture that I use over here as a size is around 600 pixel or 800 pixel. Mm -hmm. And then they get reduced by 64 by 64. So you can imagine, especially with no, with no, uh, no nearest call, nearest neighbor, no interpolation, there will be a loss of particulars. So I have to try to keep it as much as uh, linear possible you know, and then later I will do the particulars not in the Photoshop but in the last paint. And they are put or put together in the same picture here, in the same screen, to be ready to be used for, yeah. Can't you, uh, uh, why not use um, bicubic or uh, other interpolation in Photoshop first before Converting to the I blurry. tried. It came out very blurry. It came out blurry. Ah, and yeah. most important, you know, I had to go from a 24-bit color space to a 4-bit color, yeah, actually 4-bit planes, ah. 16 colors. So I had to try it as much as to keep it as much as lossless possible. That's why. A big, big challenge. Yeah, yeah, so I came up with this thing that I tried to keep the most essential particulars from Photoshop, then I reduce. And when I reduce, if you think that it was this like 600 pixels, that this is 64, you have a good result. Pretty good, actually. Yeah, yeah I came up, yeah. So I came up with this thing, and then I add all the final particulars in the last paint later. Yeah. Then we have also, an, uh, I will also talk about the splash screen. It's secondary, but there are some things that I like to talk about because it was an interesting challenge. So this is the splash screen of the 64 version with the two, two sword on the side and then the logo. I try to keep a similar approach, but I try to do it a little bit more 60 bit -ish. And uh, first of all, I redraw the, the swords. Mm. Try to be, to make it a little bit more like using the same palette. We're still using the same color, 16 color palette everywhere. And so using the just as position, I do this kind of metallic uh, reflex on the sword. I only make only one sword and then use the same one if we use it, reuse it. And same for the number two. Here I use the same palette to do this kind of metal, make it become this kind of metallic thing. And the logo, I use the sapphire font, but they he only come up to 24 pixels of size, actually 16. So I increase it, I increase the brush size, and then I went there by end to round it. <laughs> and we have this, this is the base. Starting from this, we can also work on it. Like in example here, I use this, and then I went there to, to draw a shadow in order to have some kind of gem, up gem color. I add some outline and they make it become bigger and then I use all the, these brushes, several colors of the yellow to do like a metallic shading. I, so I overlap the two here and they come out like, a, like this one, the Kajue with gold contours then using the same brush but just in color mode I, I kind of extruded in the back it got a little bit bigger here and then I put it together with the two and we have this are kind of finishing version of the logo I made some color test for the programmer here 
So I use blue, green, gray, red. Programmer choose blue. So I mean, and I want to go back and explain about what is the just exposition that I explained in the thing in the past. So when we have a limited color space, we try to obtain most shades as possible. And there are two ways of using either you do the direct shading from the light from the black dark gray to the light gray, the blue light blue. And that is a way. Hmm. It might take more color, but sometimes you might have like a, it might look like a bland. Another way is to use color of uh, intermediate luminosity, similar color but not to, but they might be completely different colors, but then when you put it together they come more blended and will give like some intermediate like shade of color that would be more interesting to see. Like in example, I use, look here, this one is like a gray shadow but also has blues and greenish and they come out like this thing. If I they come more like a more, uh, more, how can I say, more blended, more vivid shades. Like in a sample here we go from the gray to the yellow, and, and here we have the gray and the, the greenish. So it's, it's using several shades of color using together in order to make better uh, and more vivid, yeah. Question. Can I ask you an artistic question yeah. instead of a technical question? Yes. I'm fascinated by your art. Yeah. I love it. Um, having worked on the Commodore and Amiga, yeah. and then now using tablets and Photoshop, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. you talk about, yeah. what is the primary joy that you find in going back to Commodore and Amiga? Because that's what I'm fascinated about. Yeah. You have all the tools, you know, all the colors, yeah. all the pixels in the world, and why do you love being in this space? Well, you could ask me the same question because I'm, you know, I'm also a musician and I'm using Tracker, Pro Tracker, Pro Channel. Actually, I do also tuning to Channel. Limit I found out limitation breeds creativity. Yeah. Mm. In it's short, having a limited range of color, limited resolution, or limited number of channel or memory. It make you think, how can I fit this stuff? And that's what I like. I like how you're accomplishing the shading. Yeah. Whereas in Photoshop, you just put a gradient there, but yeah. you actually have to think in 8-bit color, how do I yeah. achieve this? Yeah. Actually, if I wanted to go to Photoshop, I prefer painting, but I, like some, I also did some uh, painting there. In the, and then when I was studying art, I was using, you know, tempera colors. Yeah. And I, do, and I like that too. Yeah, I'm using the same approach when I do the painting on the lady, not too much. The main reason actually is because the driver of my tablet, uh, I don't know if it's compatible with Windows 10, that's why. It's an old tablet, I bought it in 2007. That's the only thing that stopped me lately, but I will need to reinstall it again because I have to finish the work here. Because of the sickness of the programmer, COVID, everything, things were in a hold. So I have like 50% of the assets, so I will need to come back on that. Well, that's beautiful art. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like to point that because there are also more approaches to this. I, this was powder, this was in choice. We were trying not to use dithering at all. It was because we were seeing all the dithering like in uh, ST ports, you know, where I'm even in, or Commodore or uh, 8 bits, and we were like tired a bit of dithering. And so it was like to say, oh, we have this machine, can do that, we don't want to use detail. So there was this approach here, but sometimes you need to use detail because really you don't have enough cost. So you try to use like a mixed approach, or you try to use the detail in like in a, not in the same way that you're using out on the CRT or in a different, or uh, yeah. But yeah, that's what I mean. And just that position, because I was like fascinated when I was studying art from the world, like, work like people like Tiziano or Veronese, they were like putting all together those colors uh, and it was like, uh, yeah, it was it was more vivid, more things. So I, at the end I, I ended up finding myself to use a similar approach to it and instead of using a bigger color, like a straight shade and using all this intermediate color that you can mind add more one of that using the same palette and using and having different results. 
And you can see it a lot in the demo scene, especially for the 64. You have only those 16 colors, and they are doing miracle. And this is the same palette that are able to make it work like in, a, in a incredible ways that you did. They did not even recognize it the same 16 colors because of the, change of the amount of colors they use at one time or the other and the, the way they put it together. Yeah. At the end, it's the same result, the same base. And with this, I, I'm at the point that I am at the end of my intervention. I want to thank these people here, besides Robert and Mario, they gave me the opportunity to talk here. I want to to thank Christopher Tenshu, that is the guy who did the art for the game. The artwork and he probably will do also all the sexy picture on the game, unless he say that this busy this means that I will need to work myself on that. I'm not too happy because I'm not the best, uh, like as I say, anatomy artist around, so I will need to find some way to, to go around it. I hope he don't, he don't give problem. And uh, Colin, that did I work together in the Super Metal Hero, Barbarian Plus. Then the, the team from uh, Double Sided Games, the rest of the team. Jeremy, that is uh, one of Double Sided Games. Nicholas, the programmer. Roy, that is programmer of the original version of the 64. Mike Richmore, that is a musician, both in Amiga and in the 16 bit versions. I want to thank them, and at the end I have here the link to the double-sided game website, my music store where I have my music as GND, my, my YouTube channel and my Facebook all together. I want to say thank you to the class to give me the opportunity to talk today. Thank you. And I want to thank my network because it's too long. Yeah. How much time do you spend a day to do things? Hmm? Now, how much time do you spend every day on uh, graphics or anything? Well, when I was in the lockdown, you can say it was almost all day long. <laughs> <laughs> then, usually, when I was working at the film, it was like two, three hours per day. Unless my wife called me and say that I have stuff to do. <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your regular job? Well, I used to be a web developer. I used to work in iHeart Media for like four or five years. I was there. And then uh, lately I'm working in the school district. I'm an office technician and oh. they also also web developer because they need me to build like, an application for their own needs where I work. Then we lease, uh, no lease, we, we borrow materials to the TIG materials and all the model and stuff. And then taking care of the checkout there so we we had like uh, some needs to do like an application to handle the checkout, to print all the bills because the software that they use from the district was not covering those needs. So I put this extra, I made a PHP software there. We have a server that by the way was donated by Mario Machine that I'm using there to run. So, so yeah. this is a lot of work on the side, really. <laughs> all those yeah. graphics. That's, yeah. that's Hopefully, paid. No, <laughs> yeah, but if not, it's still curriculum. I hope you bring me somewhere. Oh. <laughs> but when is uh, any of the new ones coming out? The, these games that are not released. This one, as I said, that's the problem that the COVID oh, was sick. It's on hold. So for now, it's on hold. But I hope we can start again. Ah. Then Super Metal Hero, calling it to stop for other things. That he was working us on the other day. Mm. Then uh, Tenshu was working on two, three days together beside this job by Ubisoft in Canada, so yeah. It takes time for these, because it's all unaffiliated, it's all hobby level. Hobby. Mostly homebrew, yeah. Yeah, it takes time. Well, good luck. Get, Thank get, you. Get, get, get in another lot. Thank you, Simone. Well, you're welcome. Okay, you can. The Commodore Los Angeles Super Show.